Good morning. Or hello, I should say. Hello, everyone. Dana Lynette here. Welcome to my channel. I am here to do a discussion time video today. And I will be doing my makeup while I'm doing it. So, <laughs> uh, this video is being filmed in May of 2020. 2020. It's a good year, y'all. Believe it or not. Good things are happening. God is still on the throne. Anyway, so this is the time of COVID-19 situation where um, different states are on lockdown, yada, yada, yada. I live in Kentucky. I'm a, a small business owner in Kentucky. I also have a full job in Kentucky. I am a devout church going Christian woman <laughs> and I love the Lord and it's very important for me to go to church now while I would love to do this on First Amendment rights being walked on during this time um, that's not what this discussion time is about so for the past couple of days few days past few days I'd say I've had on my mind um, just kind of processing what's been going on in terms of, you know, virus versus the economy. And it's, it's really interesting, like here in Kentucky, our former, our previous governor, Governor Matt Bevin, who is a Republican, first Republican governor we've had in a while, um, so he, he was elected, you know, this businessman, you know, outsider, not a career politician coming in. You know, people had high hopes. And he had a very interesting personality uh, that a lot of people didn't jive with. And um, he had the task of dealing with Kentucky's pension situation. Okay, now, not a situation he created, but one that he took on as governor uh you know his responsibility to do something he did and in kentucky people said teachers really it was more than teachers who were affected by that uh pension situation but that's the verbiage that you know is used so i'll go with it so the the teachers um were not having it they did not like never mind the details just follow the story they did not like uh the governor's plan for dealing with the Kentucky's pension crisis. And they let it be known that they didn't like it. We are not on board. Matter of fact, you better get this together. You, you, you're you one and done. And sure enough, those teachers were at the Capitol on a regular basis, okay? Um, I don't wanna say mobs of teachers, but a bunch of them is what, what I'm talking quantity, not behavior never mind behavior I won't talk about that I was there but anyway so there were you know bus loads like school buses like teachers coming from all over the state to the capital to protest right you know heck no you know we're not down with, with the pension as you're dealing with it no and so that was their right and they exercised every right to protest and showed up at the ballot box when it was time to vote and he was one and done barely i mean he was barely beat but he was beat by our current governor uh governor andy Bashir, whose father steve Bashir, uh had been governor before so uh shortly after Bashir takes office you know this COVID. COVID-19 outbreak turns into, you know, a pandemic, a, a global pandemic. And so the whole world is trying to figure out, or most of the whole world, we're going to talk about here in the States, is trying to figure out what to do about COVID-19, right? So the current governor is a Democrat, and he uh, 
begins, you know, to govern by executive order. He has executive order, as many other governors, after executive order, after executive order. Uh, governing things like uh, closure of businesses, churches, and what is constituted as essential and non-essential. And so, you know, many people forget losing your pension. People are now losing their livelihoods, their legacy. Like, not only are people looking at not being able to feed themselves, but they're also looking at, and not being able to feed their children, but not having a legacy or a heritage or, you know, some business and money to pass on to their children. Like, stuff's getting real, not just in Kentucky, but everywhere. And, but as far as, you know, being here in Kentucky, you know, observer, my business has been impacted, but, I, you know, I didn't live by my business, but it, it's still important to me. Um, but the Lord perfects that, which concerns me. We're going to figure this out. SBA, where's my money? Anyway. So, so, it's so interesting to me. And truly, I, I just say that as a matter of my observations. I'm like, oh, okay, well, people were, people were outraged by, you know, their pensions being handled in a way that they don't agree with. And, you know, they exercise their rights down at the Capitol on a regular basis from all over the state. But now that people are forced to close their businesses and for a prolonged time, some would argue, you know, that it's not necessary, especially in Kentucky. Lord God, we've had the, no the number of lawsuits that have been filed regarding um, closure of churches. That is very interesting and probably will be its own uh, discussion time or whatever kind of video. Uh, I'll just need to... I need to hold off on that and come back to it later. But um, you you would think, I thought, that there would be more of a reaction among Kentuckians. But these same people who were outraged that their pensions were not being handled in a way that they uh, felt was kosher, if you, you know, follow that statement or allow that, are quite content to sit at home and lose their businesses and livelihood. It's just like, so So how many protests have been held nowhere near, nowhere near the amount um, that were held for regarding the pension in, in, in the previous administration? Maybe it's because people are um, so concerned about contracting the virus that they won't come out of their homes to protest. I don't know. But there was a freedom rally. Uh, there were legislators and um, other folk uh, who participated at the Capitol. And maybe there was more, but I, that's really the only thing that I've heard of. Um, I think there might have been one other thing, and there was some controversy over how that was handled. Like, like people weren't being allowed to protest, or which is you know another interesting political issue that I'm not talking about today. So. I was just surprised. I'm like, oh, Kentucky about to rise up. You know, folks, they're, look at how they act for pensions. Just I can only imagine. But nope, it was crickets. Cheek, cheek. So, you know, and, and it might be, you know, some. I have observed a, a particular political party handled, often has handled things in a way that is very dramatic in your face. And it could be that you know, folks of a, of the other main political party are not that way. They're just, they're one and done. It's not, I'm in your face telling you. They just, yep, took note, showing up to the, to the booths and you're done. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe people in Kentucky feel like, well, the concern for this virus, despite Kentucky's numbers, but you can look those up yourself really warrants us losing our businesses and livelihoods and so we're cool with it you know we appreciate um uh, all of the executive orders and closing down our businesses and we're happy to yield obeisance thank you for saving our lives i don't know um maybe i'm just not in the right right circles to hear but it sure was a matter it didn't matter what circle you were in the media you made you knew there was always an article about protests 
regarding that pension. And people's disgruntled uh, feelings about the previous administration. So, so yeah, that's been interesting. But that's not even what this video is about. <laughs> Bear with me, people. So this video, I was just thinking, so we got the federal government issuing stimulus, right? Which I got a stimulus check. I was happy when that 1200 showed up in my account. It was nice. But most Americans, I think, I, I think it's still safe to say most, don't want a handout. Uh, we want to, I assume, that's how I feel, we want our liberty back. Um, and so, yeah, there's a virus. It's real. We get it. That's not what I'm talking, not what I'm discussing here. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Follow me. We want our liberty back to run our businesses and, and um, our livelihoods and to use uh, common sense, the common sense that we have to keep ourselves safe regarding uh, spread of the virus. Because as the national conversation goes, you can't close down the economy in the name of saving lives and then lose those same lives because you have no more economy after a while. How do you feel about that? Leave a comment in the comment section. <laughs> anyway, and so my thought has been why I made this video. People can't, you know, some people are very easily conditioned to be government dependent. That was never um, the idea with the American government for the government to run our lives. That's why we have the Bill of Rights and so in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights within the Constitution and uh, checks and balances and whatnot is so that um, we don't, this is not a kingdom. It's a, a democracy. A republic. A democratic republic. So most Americans, including myself, you know, we are not the least bit interested in feigning obedience um, to some of the ridiculousness that's going on in Washington. Rather, do your limited part government. We have our liberties. We'll use our common sense. Um, but some people are very easily conditioned. You know, give me a check. Oh, I'm happy. You know, government benefits. Oh, I'm happy. The government's going to take care of me. They're going to make sure I'm safe. And they're going to give me um, a few piddly handouts. And some people are quite all right with that. And like I say, they're very easily conditioned. You got my vote. You gave me a stimulus check. Um, but that's few, I hope, who feel that way. And so we are already, we're not at a point of no return, but we are already at a very interesting place in America in terms of the economy. Um local economy, statewide, and nationwide. Um, never mind the global business. I'm talking in America right now. And so we're in an interesting place. And there, there are some devastating effects. So my thought process, which I started out introducing and never, never got to, but here it is. People do not need to be dependent upon the government. Um, not saying that anyone is intentionally conditioning people to be that way. Not saying that anyone is not. Um, I'm just saying we ought to be aware and mindful uh, as to whether that is the case. We don't need to be. And so there are very real needs that are out there, especially in light of the situation with the virus and with the economy. But again, it's a very dangerous place when the government is looked to and expected to be, you know, the end all be all solution. Oh, government save us. Oh, federal government. Oh, state government save us. Um, no, uh, I think that, you know, historically the churches, so another reason why it's important not to cripple the churches Historically, churches have been looked to in this country um, to provide aid to the needy. And not only that, but in many cases, people have been their brother's keepers. Um, there are lots of nonprofit organizations and different entities 
where the people take care of the people. And so my thought is that that is uh, a better way than this idea of, you know, government dependence. And so I'm doing some banana powder now to set this concealer so it doesn't crease on me. And so, um, you guys remember in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, when um, there was famine in the land and Joseph, who went through the whole situation of slavery and whatnot, let me come to So you guys remember when Joseph um, was in prison and he was called out of prison. That sounds like a book, called out of prison. Somebody write that. Uh, <laughs> to interpret Pharaoh's dream, he had a, a gift. And, you know, God had not forgotten him. He set him up. And Joseph, you know, cleaned himself up and went before Pharaoh, which I understand Pharaoh represents the government. He was, he was hired. He was appointed by Pharaoh um, after interpreting Pharaoh's dream that, hey, you got... Some good times come in times of abundance. And then after those times of abundance, there's going to be times of famine like you ain't never seen. Like this land has not, has never seen. And, you know, it'll be destructive. But not only did Joseph interpret the dream, but Joseph had wisdom from God. He had the wisdom of God on what to do about, about the, the destruction could have been, I mean, destruction like you've never seen before. I mean, come on, like this is, it was crazy. But he had the wisdom on how to get through it and, and for his people, Pharaoh's people, the people of the land to be fine. And so God set the stage. Joseph showed up with the interpretation of the dream and the wisdom from God on how to handle the situation. And boom, Joseph was in charge. Pharaoh might have been a heathen, but he wasn't no fool. <laughs> And he said, this man has the wisdom of God in him. Who else am I going to put in charge? Thank you. So, yeah. And so, um, Joseph was appointed as, you know, from he went from um, the prison to the palace. I mean, he was second to Pharaoh. Just like that, in a moment's time. Seemed like it was overnight, but it wasn't overnight. <laughs> Thank God for that man's character, too. Because holding grudges will get you nowhere. But forgiveness take you to the top. To the top, my brother. To the top. Anyway. So, yeah. So, um, Joseph became uh, second only to Pharaoh. And my point, yeah, I mean, in that context, Joseph, in that context, Joseph was um, government. But he was a man of God. My whole point is there's so much money being made during this uh, global pandemic, COVID-19 situation, there are a lot of people going out of business and losing everything, but there are also people who are getting rich, mega rich. Maybe they were already rich and now they're richer, rich on top of that. Funny how that always seems to happen in the pharmaceutical industry. Moving right along. Um, so, What if, instead of running to the government, people who are in need of help um, had the people of God to turn to? What if the churches were in a position to provide aid and people didn't look to the government, but who can't help anyway? The government is so broken. Have you been paying attention? Hello. What if, like Joseph, the church had um, wisdom and resources to take care of people uh, in the way that, you know, Joseph had back in the book of Genesis. Uh, I tell you, a lot more people would be actually helped. When you think about it, that $1,200 that I got a, <laughs> a while back while they sitting up arguing about whether they're going to send some more, what if I had to depend on that? God forbid. But what if there were men and women of God who had answers and there were churches in place and prosperous enough that people could come to the churches and not only would they have their needs met, but they would meet God and they would have assurance in this life and they would have eternal 
uh, assurance. Um, those who give their lives to the Lord. Not that people have to, but of course it's in your best interest to. For obvious reasons. I haven't used this palette in quite some time. It's a lot of rich color payoff here, but... So, those, those are my thoughts um, lately about this whole pandemic situation. That is some serious color payoff. Look at how pigmented that is. Yeesh. I had the nerve to dip my finger again. That's a lot. So, what do you think about that? Do you feel like, girl, shut up. Let the government do its thing and take care of us. That's what we paid them for and they do it best. I pray that's not <laughs> how you feel. That would be tragic. That would be a tragedy. Or, you know... Do you feel what I'm saying? It's time for the people of God to have dreams and wisdom and um, resources uh, to be the the solution, you know, that people need the help in time of trouble. But obviously the church can't do that if the church is too busy looking to the government for assistance too. Or if the church is oppressed by the government so that the church can't even assemble and be the church to provide those solutions. Frankly, the church is and ought to be the solution for both the pandemic, illness, hello, and for the economy. You know, God doesn't just reach his hand down and do things. He uses people. He uses the church body. I was gonna put some lashes on today, but I don't think so. I have rambled on and on, but it is time for the Josephs to rise up. What's your witty invention? Are you a Christian? Do you have a business still in operation? No business at all, but you got a God-given dream or a God... Ooh. A God-given vision. Um, we, as the people of God, are certainly to be. This is um, not the most pigmented. We are the solution. We are someone's answer going somewhere to happen. All right, are you a Joseph? Time to rise up. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.